Everybody's heard of Abe Lincoln, but what do you really know about his kids? From tadpoles to typhoid, here's the story of the Lincoln family. Among the many tragedies of Abraham Lincoln's life was the fact that only one of his children lived to adulthood, his oldest son, Robert Todd Lincoln. Born in Springfield, Illinois in 1843, Robert did not have a happy life. He claimed that his earliest memory was that of his father waving goodbyes he left on business, and the two always had a distant relationship. Robert resented Lincoln's devotion to his political career, and he especially resented the attention that came from being the son of a public man. Yet he was reportedly not above trading on his famous surname while studying at Harvard. During the Civil War, Robert tried to enlist in the Union Army, to his mother's horror. It's believed that Mary Lincoln pressed her husband to secure Robert a position on General Ulysses S. Grant's staff, keeping him away from combat. He returned to Washington, D.C. at the war's end and was at his father's bedside after his assassination. It was the first of three presidential assassinations Robert would be associated with. He later witnessed the shooting of James Garfield and was outside the building where William McKinley was shot and killed. Though estranged from his father for much of his life, Robert wept over Lincoln's dying body and later followed him into politics. He was Secretary of War to James Garfield and Minister to Britain for Benjamin Harrison, though he grumbled at times that he was only appointed to such roles for his name. He died in 1926 at the age of 82. The Lincoln's second-born son, Edward Baker, is an enigmatic figure in American history. Born in 1846, his childhood exploits became fodder for his parents' letters. For example, Abraham Lincoln wrote about Eddie's attempts to talk in April 1848. A month later, Mary Todd Lincoln wrote to her husband that Eddie became so attached to a kitten his older brother had found that he screamed at his step-grandmother when she tried to throw it out. Sadly, Eddie wouldn't live to reach his fourth birthday. He became seriously ill at the end of 1849, likely of tuberculosis. Eddie died on February 1, 1850, to his parents' great grief. He was initially buried in a cemetery near the family home, but his remains were later interred with those of his father and brother in the family tomb. Surprisingly enough, William Wallace Lincoln's namesake wasn't the famous Wallace of Scottish history. They may take our lives, but they'll never take Instead, Willie was named for Mary Todd's brother-in-law. He was born in 1850 in Springfield and took after his father in temperament and personality. Abraham Lincoln reportedly recognized the similarity, too. With the expansion of American railways, he was able to travel home more frequently and take a larger role in Willie's upbringing than he had in Robert's, and the two quickly grew close. While the other Lincoln boys could sometimes provoke ire outside the family, Willie seems to have been a well-loved child. He was studious, religious, well-mannered, and kind. He was also much more comfortable with his father's duties and fame than Robert had been. Willie, the pride and joy of the Lincolns, became a source of great personal grief for them in the Civil War. He died in February 1862 after a short bout of typhoid fever. After Willie's death, Abe Lincoln said, He was too good for this earth. I know that he is much better off in heaven, but then we loved him so. It is hard, hard to have him die. Thomas Tad Lincoln, the youngest of the brothers, was arguably Abraham Lincoln's favorite child. He was certainly indulged at every opportunity. Born in Springfield in 1853, Thomas was named for Lincoln's father and nicknamed Tad by the future president for his squirmy nature as a baby, wiggly as a tadpole, as Lincoln put it. Tad was rambunctious and mischievous as a child, and while he could be affectionate with his family, his pranks and outbursts made him difficult for tutors, secretaries, and the White House staff. It's been speculated that Lincoln was so lax in disciplining Tad because his youngest son had a speech impediment. He also came down with typhoid fever at the same time Willie did, and some believe the loss of the older boy, as well as Tad's lucky recovery, might have made Lincoln even more indulgent of his youngest child's behavior. Tad was the only of Lincoln's children besides Robert to outlive their father. He was actually seeing Aladdin and the Magic Lamp in another theater when Lincoln was assassinated at Ford's. After his father's death, Tad reportedly faced his prospective future with maturity, though he still struggled to read and write. After several years of traveling Europe with his mother, he became ill on his return to the United States in 1871 and died, most likely due to tuberculosis. He was 18 years old. With Abraham Lincoln's long absences from the home during his congressional years, Mary Todd Lincoln was their children's primary caregiver, and she was even more indulgent a parent than Lincoln. True to her general disposition, she would sometimes lose her temper with her children, but she forgave easily, and even her harshest critics considered her an attentive and loving mother. But Mary Todd's relationship with her sons became complicated as the family suffered tragedy after tragedy. Willie's death left her in such a despondent state that Lincoln feared that she might need to be hospitalized in an asylum. She and Tad grew exceptionally close after Lincoln's assassination, but Mary fretted over his learning difficulties. When they went abroad, Tad became more of a protector and caregiver to his mother. In letters back home, Mary would say that he reminded her of his father. 
Her most difficult relationship was with Roberts, with whom she grew estranged after Lincoln's assassination. Mary's increasingly erratic behavior after the loss of three sons and her husband worried Roberts, and he had his mother committed to an Illinois asylum in 1875. This action was taken on the advice of Mary's doctors, but she resented Robert nonetheless. She later used the press and the law to confirm her sanity and win her freedom. She and Robert kept a frosty relationship until her death in 1882.